They didn't launch, say they launch with Dave down the road who yeah. lives on the lake, right? And they're going to go to his house and hang out. That's not part of the count, as far as I know, for the state launch. So, what so if they're not parked mm -hmm. there, then yeah. the, the, so the, the park attendant is going to see, hey, I have a space open. Yeah, sure, come on in, come on in, come on in. You can park there. But if they're just dropping and going, as of right now, there's nothing to stop that. So how much time would they close the gate then? When all the spots are full. My other question is with the overcrowding and with what you just mentioned, you know, people coming on the lake breaking rules violations. I'd be curious to see how many of those are people that are not residents of the lake yeah. or, or whether they're renting a slip and they're not there all the time. Because, I mean, in the last couple of years, we know a lot more people are doing outdoor recreation, bought a lot of boats, every marina. I mean, I get asked all the time, hey, any chance I can put a boat in here? You know, these people have never voted before. They come on a lake and they just tear it up all weekend long. So, as a lake resident, I don't even go out on the weekends hardly anymore because there's a bunch of idiots out there. So, I don't know if you, you have stats on the number of people that actually live on the lake that are getting tickets to these violations or if there's anything else you can do to say, in order to get on the lake, you have to have some sort of safety certificate. I, it's, I, I will say my, my own personal stats, just being out there, about 80% of the violations are people that launch or people that don't live on the lake that are borrowing a jet ski or borrowing a pontoon or something else. Right. Because frankly, they don't know the rules of the lake like the residents do, so, you know, yeah, about 80%. Okay. They don't care, they're only here for a day. They're not living on it. Well, they, they care when they get the citation. <laughs> Go ahead. Is it possible that, um, like if Lola prepared like a uh, something for you to uh, check mark so that we can collect this data over the next year from all three offices. Um, are they a resident? Are they renting a slip? Are they whatever? So at, not just tickets, but warnings and any sort of violations, like just so that we can have this data to show people throughout the year um, so, so that you know exactly. More than saying like roughly 80%. Like we know we've had this many and it's this, this is where our problems is because if you if you solve you know your big twenty percent like where all your problems are that, that pretty much covers it. Well, I guess I would play devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah. What would be the outcome of doing that? What would be the outcome of doing that is maybe we um, limit or we number one it would help us enforce not having um, people renting out their their slips at their house. Also having um, possibly like an information flyer that's passed out um, on the weekends to all the people that are launching. These are the rules on Lake Orion. When you see red balls right outside by Squaw Island, that's a no wake zone for this weekend. Because I, I live on Park Island and I sat there for hours and watched people flying past those red balls when they're trying to bring out the fireworks. And nobody was doing anything. I saw the Lake Orion boat, not pulling anybody over. I saw all of it. We and I, I was sitting there for hours. We have to work the barge out. So my responsibility yeah. at that time is to safely get the barge out. If people are flying around, you can't leave the barge because a couple of years ago we had somebody almost hit the barge. But exactly, and that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about them getting hurt and, and you know, and well, all the stuff that the-, the I was boat. there. Yeah. You're talking about yesterday, right? I'm talking about on yeah, Saturday. Saturday. Or, yeah, Saturday. Um, I, I mean, I was out there and we were stopping boats that were coming in. If they were going really slow, we would let them go by, but if they were coming in hot, we would stop them. Yeah, there's a wake boat going by from two tubers, like right there, right around the thing. Yeah. Huge yeah. wake, and I was like, I'm just waiting, waiting for the flashes. I'm like, I come on, it's done now. I'm waiting, waiting for it, and nothing. And so, and the thing is, is that I think that these, these people, they just don't know, just like you said, they don't know the rules of the lake. And so how can we get that information out? Um, it's hard when it's not staffed, like what he said. But if, when it is staffed, what if there's a flyer that says, hey, you need to review this before you launch. Because this, you know, this next week when we've got fireworks coming out again, so, right? So I could say, typically whenever I pull somebody over, whether they get uh, ticket or not, I generally hand them one of the DNR uh, voter safety books. Most of them don't know the rules. Yeah. They've never been to voter safety or they took it 20, 30 years ago. Um, that's the that's not great. Yeah, that I know. I have that one. I, I hand them a copy twice, so. and have them 
just reiterate, mm -hmm. read through it, make sure they know what they need to know. But I think instead of having a reactive approach, we, if we have a proactive approach where we catch them before they even put the books in the water. Hey, FYI, these are, this is a heads up of what's going on in Lake Orion, and um, this is what we're watching for, right? Here's your flyer. It's always good to get the community involved, right? right I mean, we, yeah. we, we would want that 100%, mm -hmm. but you got to remember, too, on the other side of it, it's a public boat launch. Yeah. So if someone, excuse my term, can tell you to go pound sand, I don't want your flyer. But it's a public boat launch. You can do it. And I mean, I'm sure you'll hit maybe yeah. 60, 70 percent of the people that come on the lake, um, <coughs> and it might make a difference. It probably would make a difference. Mm -hmm. But what you have right now, what you guys are dealing with, is it's just a lake that's just being overpopulated. Yeah. That's all. I mean, hey, is there any requirement so for those uh, those legal marinas that are running out all the extra slips legally? Is there any requirement for them to? Verify who they're running to has any knowledge of using a boat or no. a jet ski. No, all it is is word of mouth. Like, hey, have you used a boat before? Yeah, I've used a boat before. Yeah. Cool. All right, have a good day. So <laughs> maybe, maybe Jerry and the rest of the world, maybe we uh, we target those four legal marinas and ask them to come to one of our smaller meetings and have a discussion with them and see if. Because the problem is, right, if it's education, but it's not the people that live on the lake. So how do you educate? the people who don't live on the lake, right? I mean, we have the mailing addresses for all of the, the ones that live on the lake. We can send a flyer, but right. if they're not the problem, how do we target the problem, right? How do we, how do we educate the people who need to be educated? You know, right? one, one thing, I mean, right now for a, for a PWC, a personal watercraft, you have to be 44 years old to operate without a, without a license, right? Um, without a voter's license? Without a, without a voter certificate, which is the education behind it, right? I mean, it could be that if, it, if, if everybody lobbies, right, we could have, it's a requirement to have a boater safety certificate to operate any, any kind of vessel on the water. Mandating the education, but that's bigger than us, that's a state that's Right, but you said if they're not, if they're under 44 and they don't have one, they're not allowed to operate one on the lake, right? Without a right. certificate. Right. Right. right, so could we, on the weekend, I don't know if it's a possibility, the ones that, come to the public boat launch, when they come into the boat, before you get in there, you've got to show that you're either over 44 or have a certificate to be able to drive that boat, because legally, you're saying without it, they can't drive on the lake. No, you can't do that legally. Why can't you? Yeah. Essentially, that'd be like doing a traffic stop. You would detain that person and asking them for verification for something that legally you can't do unless you see them operating a vessel on the lake. Well, can you sit right, in the outside the you could well, sure. Then you're, and then, I mean, you're, going, you're going to get a bunch of stuff, other stuff. I mean, then you're looking at entrapment. I mean, it goes into a whole yeah. broader span of stuff. Right yeah. now, you have a public you have a public boat launch on your lake. Right? You can't just stop people and say, hey, you're mandatory. you got to tell me if you have one or not. I can say it from my truck or on my boat when I see him about the launch. Like, hey, you got, you got a boat safety? Most of them say yeah or no, whatever. You know, if it's younger, I'll, I'll check. But, um, other than that, unless they're physically operating the boat, we have no legal right to, to detain them. Okay. But that can be on the flyer. Right. But my other <laughs> question, my other question, <laughs> there was 80-something stopped because they did something that you could check things, right? Or did hear somebody say there was 80-some violations? You're talking about those tickets, yeah. just violations. You're actually stopped. Well, somebody. right. If they were stopped for a violation at that time, can you ask them for that certificate? And if they're not, if they're under yeah, 44, Tim, automatically. Tim, 100% of the time, when they get stopped for something and they're not in that window, you know, if they're in that window where they need a motor safety certificate, I, I ask them. Okay, it's and required, if they're under 44, and I ask them 100% of the time. Yep. Yeah, okay. it stays that way. I mean, I'm not going to pull over about jet ski without asking to get motor safety. Well, no, I just wonder because if 80 some were stopped, I figured coming on that lake, the ones I see aren't over 44, right? How do we? If they're not doing it right, most of them didn't have that. Does anybody know how long a bar safety course takes? The average yeah, course when I did it, it was like two hours or three hours, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. three hours if you're on the slow end. Maybe. Yeah, you, that's go, for our you go to a class, you so, take get it, you pay your money, I mean, and then they give you the I had to do it. Yeah. You can do them online now. Yeah, you can do it online. So. I mean, people can sit inside the state launch and yeah. do it on their phones, and then come out and show us that day. It's still on the system. Well, because that's a good thing, right? Good. Yeah, it is a good thing. <laughs> but is a good thing? Are you retaining information in two hours worth of coursework for 
Auburn could probably not, but I mean, we're getting Yeah, but I'm going to try right on the thing and which ways to go on the movies and that, just for <clears> that three hours, which a lot of people don't. Not don't know because they never pay it. Public launch? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I guess the, 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 the good thing is that I have a question. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Okay. I, I had not heard of any accidents. I, I, apparently that, uh, that's good because you guys are out there. Uh, having been in the middle of an accident way back in the day, it's very scary. And uh, I haven't even heard of anything. That's good, right? That. So any any accidents at all? I have not taken one. No. Awesome. So no, right. I have not. We had one ski jet hit take yeah, out three of years. Is on my last accident that we had, I believe. Yeah. Three, three years ago. About three. About three years ago. There was there was one last year. Um, right ski. across from your place. Too. Yeah. Right. right there, ski right? jet. Yeah. In a bay where it says no weight was right. flying around and then, under the water, came up through the middle of the dock and took it out and hit a boat. Right. And in that case, it was a birthday party in the next bay, and the guy came and said, hey, can I take the jet ski? And they said yes. And he had no idea what he was doing. Jumped on it and went flying through the bay at a high speed and hit the dock. Matt, I think he hit your dock. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Right? Because the board's it. still hanging like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> How do you fix this? The only thing is he kept telling our neighbor, well, you've been drinking too. So he was drinking too. Okay. He even admitted to it. So what I've, what I've heard so far is that Lake Orion has a, the distinction of being one of the worst lakes in the county, if not the worst. I could be here. Uh, secondly, I, I heard that potentially we as a community to try to do uh, a better job of communicating to the users of our lake. Um, what suggestions do you guys have on what else we can do? We can't close down the boat ramp. We can maybe turn in neighbors if they're renting a side of the dock for four grand. But what else can we do? So one suggestion I'll make is just us as a community, if you see something and, and I'm out there, just come by and let me know, you know. I mean, so often, you know, I'll hear later that, oh, I saw this jet ski going the wrong way all day long. Like, really? I mean, that's a recipe for disaster. If you guys see me out there, or, or any of us, right, let us know. If you see something that's not right, let us know. Let's stick together. We need to keep the lake safe that way. Well, I was going to say, we're complaint driven, so if we get a complaint through dispatch, we will get out there. Just tell the dispatcher that you know the village lake already has a boat there, and they'll call my officer. Go watch out at one o'clock in the morning. They're all, all my officers have been trained to operate our boat. They will just get out of the patrol car, get on the boat, which we keep at Greens Park, and they'll go look for your complaint. Loud music or whatever it may be. Kids playing, you know, silly things out there or whatever, or being up on a plane in the middle of the night. But you have to call a dispatch. Otherwise, we don't know. If you call my office, it goes to a voicemail box after 5 o'clock. So that if you say, oh, let me just pick a tenant's box, well, I don't come in until 7 a.m., I'm going to get it the next morning. So if something happens at 1 o'clock in the morning, I'll never, no, I'll never see it. And I have the this. same provision for the deputy sheriff. Can we, can we call dispatch? Yeah, the sheriff's department or? If an hour looks there, I'm not emergency number is 858-248-858-4911, but if, if they have a concern, just call 911 directly. Don't worry about the, if it's an emergency. And does this include noise? Because, you know, it's not uncommon. We have a noise box at 10 o'clock in the village. Yeah. Just so everybody knows, I'm state, I cannot enforce any ordinances. No. <laughs> I'm not, I'm just saying that to say that. But I cannot enforce any, any city ordinances. I enforce state law only. So if something like that, if you call a rap line, I just I call you and tell you the same thing. I'd say call the locals and they'll go out and take care of it the best they can. And what about more funding so we have more officer hours on the water? From the state's perspective, it's not going to matter, obviously, because right. I'm, I'm yeah. talking more about the locals. No, for the for the county, um, we have all the funding we need. I mean, it's it's as much as I can do, you know, for the weekend. And like I said, during the week, I go out as much as I can. So. That, well, what, that what if there was a session with you? What, uh, 
for that's, us. Sure. Yeah, that, and that's up to all the residents. If they wanted two boats out there, certainly you could contract two boats. Yeah, Township right. funds that annually. Okay, so I heard today that apparently the state is appropriating monies to the county, and the amount of fifty thousand dollars was thrown on as tax for extra patrols. Uh, the last lake that I own property on, we actually taxed ourselves, similar to the special assessment district. And I think I paid an extra, I don't know, hundred or two hundred dollars a year. But when you multiply that by nine hundred, all of a sudden it becomes a meaningful number, so that we could get extra controls. I mean, that's I, I feel like I'm in. I'll pick on on Detroit, you know, where they got kids, you know, street racing at night, and there's nobody to control. And you know, I, I'm not worried about Tuesday afternoons as much as I am nights, especially weekend nights. You know, I'll say one thing, Matt. As long as I've been out there, Lake Orion, I rarely get a complaint call. Rarely. So people aren't calling. I hear it over the radio for many other lakes, all the, all of the time, all day long, but rarely do I get a Lake Orion call. So again, if you see something, you know I'm out there, stop me. If not, call it in. I'd be glad to take it and respond immediately. Well, all right, let's suppose you're on the water, but you're at the other end of the lake from where I live. And I see something. Do I call dispatch, and then they'll right? They'll already call okay. the number the lieutenant gave you, right? And they'll dispatch me to that area. You guys mentioned uh, noise earlier. Right? The village has a noise ordinance. We have a noise ordinance. Yep. Which is what? Yeah, ours is fifty. Feet, anything after ten o'clock, fifty feet from the source. So you know, on the water, you know, we know it's going to travel that put on the water. So after 10 o'clock, turn off, turn down the stereos. To be respectful for your neighbors, yes. But we know this, you know, you know, some of the boat will be 100 feet and will travel across the lake. I mean, I've heard many radios on M24 that's coming from Bellevue Island. You know, but when you get down Bellevue Island, it's, it's loud, but it's not super loud. So we will talk to those people, turn it, please turn that down because it is projected across the lake. But like I said, our words is 50 feet from the source. Okay. What about exhaust noise? Is there a limit? There is, but you have to have a decimal meter. Yeah, and you have to be certified in that. So I have a decimal meter and I have written tickets for, for PWCs that are too loud. Or I've had them change the orifice. You know, um, it's, a, it's a procedure that you get it three feet from the wall and you measure the, you measure the sound level. Um, or it's loud music in Dollar Bay or whatever, right? In, you know, whatever the complaint is. But I do have one. Hey, Bill, have you ever done that with the uh, jet skis? You know, because we got a lot of people out there with jet skis that are very talented, and they like to, you know, show off their skill set. And uh, typically, they're loud. Over by George Hanley, and they're practicing over there, I can hear them inside the house like they're in my driveway. Now, does that not constitute too loud a noise? So the one that I just referenced was right by George's house, and... You know, those, the kids that, that run those right there, um, I tested them and he was actually right at the, right at the limit and he opened it up, changed the orifice, we re-ran re it and he was, I think, 5 dB or 4 dB lower. So he was legal. So he cooperated. So he, he cooperated, he worked with it. Yeah, so yeah, it worked absolutely. But again, you think something's too loud, I'll bring my sound meter, we'll test it, <coughs> see what we have. So basically, um, there's nothing that we can do about the overcrowding or the dock rentals or commies or the wakes that are both or any of that. Well, I think you can. You, you can. Um, and I don't want to put words in the sheriff's department's mouth, but according, according to Sergeant Burwell, Officer Hughes is out there for you guys, right? You're paying for him to be out there for more of a safety aspect instead of enforcing people renting out their docks, right. um, swim buoys, stuff. Well, like that. A, yeah. That's more of a state issue. It's but not it's just state. our issue, but it's more something I would handle. Yeah. Um, but it's on the residents to kind of help me figure out who it is, and then we can go from because there. Because the amount of boats that are on the lake is a safety issue. Right. And that's everybody's yeah. responsibility. Of course. And I'm 100 percent with you guys. And I see it. So, I'm sure obviously Officer Hughes does too more than I do. I mean, is there a way that we can post the phone number for people to call for doc? Their neighbors are running out 10 docks. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Where is where how do we post that number? Yeah, I, I would call the wrap line, the report off poaching line. Everything goes to our dispatch. Is that what number? is the wrap line number? One eight hundred two nine two seven eight zero zero. Is that number on the um we we get a flyer from the Lake Orion Association? Do they is that in our, our mailing? I don't know. Oh, well, this is not from that could be. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, yeah it could be. I'm sorry, what were the four, last four digits? 7800. 7800, thank you. Since I have to do here, uh, any chance of revisiting, uh, I hope not, that the car relax somewhere? <laughs> 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 I have not gotten any response back from what my office. What was that? Uh, we don't know. It wasn't anything poisonous, is from what I heard. Yeah, I mean, so. is there any reports to any other, uh, this summer, any other ways? No. no, not to that nature. What I, what I had read was uh, the uh, bodies were sent to uh, Michigan State University and, and it was a virus that was specific yeah. to... Uh, yeah, uh, where did it come from? How did it get to that? If, if you live on Lake Oregon, I, I think you do, you got a packet of information relative to our special mm -hmm. assessment district and in there was a letter from the DNR relative to their findings for the dead car. And it was the virus, just like you said, yes. and it affects koi. And it's a herpes violation. Virus. <laughs> virus. virus. But anyway, it, it's there. And we actually have it on our website, too. So yeah, I saw it. I saw it. I just, out of the blue, I've been on the lake for 30 years, and I've never seen it before, and hopefully I'll never see it again. It was the perfect spot. Hopefully, never smell it again. Yeah. <laughs> there were other lakes that, that experienced that as well. That was always my point. What, what did we I don't do know that? if they were local, but I read when I went down that rabbit hole online. I read a, a couple other lakes that dealt with okay. similar. Well, that issue. Feel a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see that. No. no. Uh, the other issue I bring up too is your buoys. Everybody see an abundance of buoys out there on Lake Orion? Yes, no. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. We've seen some disappear. Okay. Um, might be me out there popping on the night when you guys don't see me. <laughs> uh, so in, in order for anybody to get a buoy, right, you have to get go through a permit application, and that permit's going to come to me. Okay, if you are a resident on the lake, the odds of you getting a buoy, floating away buoy, swim area buoy, are pretty slim to none. Because you already have a state law in effect, right? 100 foot law, right? Dock, swim platform. Um, slow and awake buoys you guys already have right now. Um, you guys already have some slow and awake buoys in place for certain areas, which are illegal. Uh, you are not, as a resident, allowed to put any buoy out in front of your resident, okay, or your residence. It's illegal to do that. Again, it goes back, I could write you a citation, which is a misdemeanor, okay? Um, and if you keep it out there, well, I'm gonna take it, and then two, I'm gonna write you another ticket, and you're gonna be in the courts for a very long time. You don't wanna do that. You are allowed a swim platform, okay? You are allowed one mooring buoy. I would recommend you use that to your advantage without causing a navigational hazard, okay? So that means if someone's coming around the corner, there's an average boater, and they come up to your, your mooring buoy or your swim platform, okay, and it's causing a navigational hazard, then that you as a resident have to remove that or fix it so it's not causing a navigational hazard. That's the white one with the blue stripe? Correct. And there is a legal size limit. I believe it's 18 inches. You know, I can't remember what I'm I think it's 18 inches. It's not the gigantic ones, okay? It's not the ones that light up at night, which I see the resident <laughs> have them out there. Um, and I understand why you're doing it. I say the same speech to everybody on the lake. Who is a resident on the lake that I come across, and I have to tell you, please, sir, remove your buoy. I know it's not what you want to hear, but I'm just taking on you right now, but um, <laughs> <laughs> no, she right now. Um, no one wants to hear me say that, but I do understand where you're coming from. My grandkids are out there, my kids are out there, they, I don't want them hit by a boat. Uh, I get it completely, uh, but there is a law in place to protect you. Granted, we're not out there 24-7, but you just can't have them out there because then the lake starts shrinking. And I think about, I think we were in communication maybe two years ago when it was just getting just Crazy. I mean, the lake was just shrinking so much because everybody had an orange blow-up buoy around the residence. Okay, do not do that. 
um, push that on other residents, make sure they know, even if you know somebody that has one, it's like, hey, you know, that's illegal, you can't, you can't do that, and tell them why, you know, it's okay. Uh, but we have an issue with buoys, okay, but you are allowed to swim platform and one more in buoy. So we'll use that to your advantage and do what you want to do. I do have a more in buoy. How far out am I allowed to put Within reason. Again, it's 20, feet, it's 20 feet from my seawall, right? Okay, I mean, just common sense plays a role in this, okay? I mean, if, you, if you're out there and you know you're kind of shoving a little bit further out there because you want to stop from some jet skiers from coming close to shore, which we get all the time, um, don't do that because then they're going to come talk to you. So, just yeah, out. I mean, within reason, right? Some common sense is all they care about. I got a question. You know, when you come in from the big lake and you're going over to the it just old farm, you know, you know, they got that first movie that says no way. And that's one that's a beautiful when you make that left, and you got my house is over there, and then you got the island across. Can they down by that? Because that's all a no wave zone, correct? Are you just saying that? No, it I'm there? asking. So there's no local watercraft control for that area because right in the middle, from what I've done my my um, my measuring, you are right in the middle. Of it. So they can do a no. They can wait there. Essentially, yeah, but it narrows in there, right? I mean, there's a point in there where you're you're, you're 100 feet on either side. But what I and I ran into a resident last year who was coming at me with on my jet ski working, right? It said the same thing, but I was like, we're within 100 but, feet. but then when you get to them two houses that are at the point, right? It's very narrow. Yep. There isn't. There you there's some weeds there. Mm -hmm. Can they put a no way buoy there just so that people know they can't make that way there? So, Tim, just to be clear, I'm just so, asking. so the area you're talking about, everything is less than 200 feet across. So it's slow no way by virtue of 100 feet. Right. Shore, right. The big bay on the back side, the west side, you can, that's more than 200 feet. Oh, yeah, they so, are on that right? part. But right. everything else in that area right. you're talking about is slow no way. Right, but right, right in front of ours, yeah. everybody yeah. thinks yeah. because. There's no buoy if you get to Big Lake. A lot of them people that aren't from the lake think that that area they can go flying through because we get it all the time and we have neighbors telling them, hey, it's a no way. And they're like, there's no buoy. So that's why I'm asking, their weeds are there so the boats aren't going to hit it. So could we ever put one right by them weeds right before that little bridge that we can't even go under besides on the kayak? So if this is all one association, I recommend whoever the president is <coughs> fill an application put in the, the mapping, do everything you need to do, with all the instructions are on the, all the permit application, submit that, and that would probably go to me, or my new partner, probably most likely me, and I'd come out and do an investigation, um, and then we go from there. Can I have a little history on all those movies? In 1986 is when we actually went through the process of the Lake Royal Lake Association buying buoys, filing for the permit, and getting approved locations. We had a lot more on our request than was approved because it was pretty obvious to people, for the most part, that it's less than 200 feet. So I don't recall that we asked for a buoy there, but we had a lot of them turned down because they just didn't want to see buoys all over the lake. We got a lot of areas that aren't marked with no wake buoys that actually are no wake areas. Well, and that's what Bill's talking about. Right, but there's a lot of people coming in the lake that ain't from there that don't know the rules. So well, if you don't know the rule, then they don't care about it. But if the buoys are there, yeah. they would know. Yeah, yeah. It, not necessarily. Not the way they would rip by the buoys. So, just a little history for you. <laughs> or, um, would Lola be able to like erect a, a sign at the boat launch? like? You know the area where it curves around and you're waiting, you're waiting for the guy to launch his boat, and so you're sitting there in line, and there would be like a big educational sign, like, hi, welcome to Lake Orion. FYI, we have no wake zones, you need a voter safety certificate. Any questions, call Jerry, that sort of stuff. No, we no, we no, 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 but I mean, like, could, like, who do we talk to about allowing us to put a Lola information billboard. For that, if it's on state land, contact uh, the park rangers at Ball Mountain. They're the but ones. You're not a park ranger. I'm not. Uh, right. If you comment that, they see you outside. We're going to call. <laughs> <laughs> to answer that question, based on the sign king, they don't listen. Yeah, yeah I know, but but you like, don't um, give a shit. That's but, right. but there has to be. We can't just say. 
take, oh, it's impossible. Oh, it's, everything sucks. You can't. You have to put forth some effort. And if the problem is education, then we we'll educate them at the yeah. I like the admission. I, 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 I mean, it's both. Like, <laughs> there, there's a, inventive ways that you can educate people, and the professor is what we do for a living. Okay. And so, and I think that also there we should say, guess what? This length is 100 feet. Do you know why that's important? Because that's how far you need to be away from these docks. And, and while they're standing there in line, do you know how far, or like even on the, the, the launch, the dock for the launch, this launch is 20 feet long. You need to be five times as long as this away from any dock. Like, so that while they're standing there, they're looking at it, it's painted bright. This is 20 feet. You need to be 100 feet away. Like, just simple things that catch their eye. You have to spoon feed people. All right. All right. So I'll bring it up with the presidents. Very quick, if you see an illegal buoy, you call a rap line? Yes, call a rap line. Uh, I might ask not all. Uh, really, let me ask about the, the doorway. I had one many, many, many years ago in St. Clair River. It was a criminal offense when I went to court about it. Say, as today, you got to go for a rain that then that that ball. So, first of all, I got a motor vehicle violation. Can you repeat the question for the folks? Because we're actually filming this as well. Or do you want to say it again? Oh, uh, uh, I think you're asking if it's a misdemeanor offense or a civil infraction. Like, is it a, is it a place to a parking ticket? You get a ticket and go on your way? Right. Well, yeah, yeah. well I, I went before. Well, let me ask you again. Uh, the violation for it, I, I had one years ago on St. Clair River. I was unaware of the area of you know, like, uh, Clay Township. There's one there. Uh, but I, I wanted to fight it. So I went to court and I went there and I found out in my first appearance it was an arraignment hearing. So it made it a criminal violation. I just want to know if it's Criminal violation today, or is it like a motor vehicle violation? Oh, wait, take it out. It's a civil infraction. It's a civil infraction. <clears throat> okay. So if someone went to, you go and take care of it like a traffic violation. Correct. Right. Okay. okay. So it didn't work out. Again, there's a lot of misdemeanor tickets, but that's not law. That's a civil. Belton Point. Anybody have any concerns over there? Docking? Well, there's not enough uh, docks, public docks for the people that brought their permits over there. I mean, they only had, what, 15 spaces and they sold 150 permits to use that? Six. Had, uh, six. 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 Is there only six? So you put a boat on either side? Okay. Three decks. Six, six spaces. Okay. They're purchasing six more to put on the other side of Green's Park in, in the park. Um, they just ordered three of them, I think, last Friday. So until they get the material in, the DPW will come in and install them. They got to put a new fence in there, stuff like that, and make them look like a little more of a <coughs> sidewalk. So there will be six more coming. I think we're doing three this year and three next year. One of the things I think, <coughs> Chief Rosman, is the fact that you need to display your sticker on the window of your boat? Or it has to be on the front of the boat. This in front of the boat? In front of the boat. Okay, in front of the boat. I can tell you I've written plenty of tickets for that. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I do better because when I see boats out there and I write a ticket, I take a picture of all three sides of your boat. So don't say I stuck it on the side of my boat. I took a picture of your boat. So I'm not okay. buying it. But I don't think a lot of people realize that until after they get the ticket. Well, it says that when you get when you buy it from the village, they give you the rules, it tells you where to place it. But you were swimming in the It also oh, says. Exactly. I've seen like people uh, <laughs> clothesline through the windshield. There's some that don't. Normally, I'll carry our list of people who bought it. Um, I will say, too, if there are complaints, we won't put the ticket on the boat. The ticket gets we won't board, We will not board your vessel with the ticket on it. We will mail it right. It also says put it on the starboard side, but people put it on the port side. I see that all the time. Wow. As it relates to that, uh, parking, have there been any accidents, yeah. people crossing M24 to get to the restaurant? None. Not one, thank goodness. That was my biggest concern. You want to be pretty careful going around. 
yeah, the people driving down the road aren't fearful. That's that's not well, like we haven't had one yet. So, but earlier we were talking about navigational hazards, and you know, rafting is a very popular activity out on the lake. And some of those rafting, uh, this is where you're tying the boats all together, and you're creating this line of boats. Um, when that constitutes a navigational hazard, is there something you folks can do to say, hey, you guys need to reorganize this or something so boats can get through? Yeah, so something I could do. I don't know if Officer Hughes does that or not. I'm sure he would if he comes across it, but um, yes, that's obviously a concern. That's a navigational hazard. You cannot prohibit any boats, vessels, kayaks, canoes to get through a passage that's open to the public. So you refer it to be like a Dollar Bay or in the sandbar or well, just a general right on the lake? Wait, we're seeing a, like, a growth of it because it's very popular. You know, because on the weekend people like to get out there and party and do it and they're tying the boat together and I see it over by the boat club. Um, I almost I have it. one every weekend that I yeah. just advise and they friendly education and move along here in the you're in the path of the boats are traveling. Okay. Would that include people who anchor out in front of my boat lift so I can't get my boat on the boat lift? <coughs> it's almost every weekend. Do you say something to them? Um, I'm sure you do, right? No, actually I don't because no. my wife says you're just going to get my <laughs> I meant you say something nice. <laughs> right. yeah. Thank you. It was pretty obvious that I needed it's like yeah. black what are the rules for that? Like, like for his benefit. I mean, uh, he's obviously 30 feet from the shoreline. He's going to be a boat out, so somebody's got to be, yeah. Yeah, obviously, you, you have to get your vessel out, right? So if they're anchored there, ask them nicely to remove the boat and get your boat out. Um, individuals are allowed to anchor on the water. There's nothing illegal about that. Obviously, they can't moor at night over 24 hours. Um, but as far as them just anchoring, they can anchor. So they can actually block them in. Well, no, we don't want that. I mean, but, you know, just, hey, please move your boat. I need to get my boat out. It just might be just some education right. from one of us to say, hey, come on, buddy. Let the guy get his boat out. Yeah. And if they won't move, then call. And yeah. Come over and give them a friendly reminder. Right. Right. A big time. I see the same in the morning on the weekends, fishermen outside my seawall. Oh, they could fish there. You know? So they're not, you know, they're just floating or whatever they're doing. They can fish out there. So there's really no law. Does everybody stop. know there is a law for fishing harassment? Yes. There actually is a law yeah. for fishing harassment. So if you are prohibiting somebody to fish outside of your seawall or next to your boat, causing whatever disturbance it may be, I can come and give you the ticket for fishing harassment. <laughs> I don't, I don't have any more blow-up things because the, the fishermen come in and they're trying to toss under and just they pop everything. Yep. But I will tell you, I've got, I couldn't tell you how much line around my way runner lifts, yep. around my pontoon. I have a little little chunk of sand. I was cleaning out the other day, got a hook in my, my, my finger. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure there's anything you can do about it. And you're, if you're saying, I'm, I, I'm complaining there's to the not. guy. Only because the surface of the water belongs to the public. Um, and I know it's not something, again, one of the things you, you want to hear. Um, you pay your taxes for that property and, and whatnot in the water. Um, but as far as the state's concerned, that's, that's public water. They can fish anywhere on the water. I mean, obviously, if they're stepping on your land or your dock or your boat, that's another situation. Or kids swimming there. Yeah, I mean, right, kids swimming in a certain area, obviously, we'd, we'd want to speak to them. <laughs> but, but honestly, like, why why do they not have to follow the counterclockwise rule? I've Ooh. always seen them going. They're always going. You about the fishermen? Yes. Always. Uh, is it like a tournament going on or something of that nature? Is that what you're? I don't care. It's, it's not. I mean, I took boater safety. Yeah. You're not supposed to be going backwards. So yeah. Of course. Why? Um, why are they? I mean, every day. Oh, yeah. Every day. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you why they're doing. Maybe because they think they're using a trolling motor, doesn't apply to them. I, I don't know. The only time I've ever, the only, well, I'm just saying as far as their interpretation. I don't know. I can't okay. tell you. I can't speak to them. But you can write a ticket for that. Yeah, they're going the wrong direction. Of course. So that's the misdemeanor. Let's rephrase the question just a little bit. If a fishing tournament was going on 
and we know how these guys have their spots on the lake, and they were going in the wrong direction, would you write a ticket during a fishing tournament to a fisherman going the wrong way? And I understand they're disqualified from the fishing tournament if they get a ticket. Oh. Do they? That's, that's, what somebody, that's what somebody told me. No, I just, I'm pulling out of my voice and there's you know, guys coming this way. You're not expecting them to come this way. You know? But it, whether it's a fisherman or anybody else going the wrong way, it's, it's a violation, obviously a huge safety concern, and I've written many of those tickets that way. Sometimes it's education, sometimes they want to argue, and it's a, just a citation for a better education. How far would they have to go backwards before you Well, you know, I mean, I look again. Safety is paramount. So, if if they're going the wrong way and they're approaching a blind corner, you know, like at the end of Long Point, for example, I, I see boats going the wrong way, and then making that that turn around Long Point when you can't see, and then a boat is coming the other way, right? So to me, that's a big deal. If it's just open water, they're going the wrong way, I may just stop them and ask them, do you know what the direction of the lake is? You know. Um, if it's a jet ski and they look like they're 25 years old or something, obviously, the, upon interview, I'm going to ask for the voter safety certificate. Then they don't have that. Then there's a ticket for a wrong direction and a ticket for no voter safety certificate. Maybe, right? Or an education or maybe just one ticket. I, I don't know, right? reason I would ask these questions is like, I'm new. This is my first meeting. I just bought property in January. So this is all new to me. So you guys are my sources of information now to get myself stabilized. I'm not just being. <laughs> Welcome to the court. Thank you. Now, now when you're yeah. motorized, like your kayaks and your uh, paddle boards, do you have to go the same direction as boats, or can they go either way? They're required to go the same direction as boats because there's still positive navigational hazards to go the other way. But I would probably be more lenient with them, okay. most likely. <laughs> Well, no, I just asked because yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. We, we stay so close to shore, and we go either way because we're real close to shore. And I, I just thought I'd better ask before, because I do sometimes go to the left when I come out of my thing, and I'm staying right near the docks. But I'm supposed to still go. The yeah, you can still the consider the vessel like a kayak because okay. you're required a, a safety or a life jacket, right? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah you sure to clean it. I've been warned by him one time. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it took us one morning. There was one morning, right? I didn't know that they needed it. He yeah. told me right off that. He didn't like that. So as much as these guys want to stay with us for us tonight, we kind of got to wrap up their, their session because we do have some other things that we need to discuss today. You guys want one last question or we'll be much good to go? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One quick comment before I get started, be one of those people. Um, every spring, the sheriff puts out a message to the public of voter safety rules. A lot of people listen to it, who knows? But if you also have ideas that you want to push to your neighbors, you can put uh, news in the Orient Living Magazine, which are always looking for articles, as well as they can go on to the Orient website. So if you want to submit those, maybe they can post those up to your neighbors. So maybe your neighbors are not aware. So if people come to borrow some of their doc space for the day, they can kind of educate them as well. I
hearing as it stands right now will be August 15th. That's the earliest that they can get it on the docket for the township board. Um, when we talk about this SAD, uh, we really appreciate the support that we got from the community and I have to, can somebody let those doors swing shut? George? Hey Matt, you shut the door. Thank you. When we started our SAD, um, there's, there's always a cost involved for it. And we paid a dollar per Sidwell for all of the Sidwells that were going to be in our SAD district. A Sidwell is an official description, number and letter description for your property. There's 838 of them on Lake Oregon. So the Lake Association spent $838 just to file for the application. Then we put together the information booklets under the spirit of total transparency, <clears throat> excuse me, and gave you a lot of information about the SAD. We gave you the wording for the petition. We gave you what we thought were gonna be the relative costs and it has proven to be true. Uh, we gave you the PLM information, or that's our weed uh, service organization, relative to the reductions in weed mass and the, uh, the, the, the water clarity issues, water quality issues. Everything has improved dramatically over this last seven years. Right now we are in year eight of our SAD, and next year, if it goes through the township board, we will start a 10-year SAD. And I suspect everybody in this room already got their official notification from the township. And based on the frontage of your property or properties, you know exactly what it's going to cost you. Uh, PLM was chosen again as our provider, and that was based on cost. Uh, the proactive uh, methods that they use to procure chemicals you know, we all hear about all uh, the supply issues and that kind of thing. PLM was very proactive, and I don't know how they knew it, but they knew that something was coming. So they have protected themselves. Also, they have not had the staff issues that we so commonly hear about. So those two things were major, along with the quality of service that we have gotten from them over the last seven years. Now. SAD isn't creating a swimming pool. We are taking out invasive weeds and native weeds that prevent you from getting to your dock or recreate in your frontage. So there's always a couple of things. We delayed the treatment, the first treatment this spring, and that was delayed by a week because the water was too cold for the treatment to be effective. Well, Mother Nature gave us a big curveball and we heated that water up very quickly, and we got a lot of algae blooms, and we got a lot of weed growth. They were just out here last week, Monday, and they treated, and it takes about two weeks for everything to be seen as far as the improvements. I know some people are seeing this little spindly weed coming up, and it's got something that sticks out of the water by three or four inches. That is a native weed, believe it or not. And it's called Illinois, Illinois weed. I don't know what I got from Illinois, but anyway, we got it. I called Steve Hansen on it. 
and uh, he expects that by next week at this time, that weed shall be dropping down and dying. Where it's a navigational hazard, excuse me, not a navigational hazard, but it prevents you from recreating or getting to your property. We're not wiping out all the weeds on the lake. You have to have weeds for fish to live in. So um, that being said, that those little books that we put together and the postage and all of the, what we paid for the Sidwells, we took out of our treasury $2,700 to do all of this. And this is for the betterment of the lake. Now, what you can do beyond signing that petition, you can drop a note to Julie Savard. Her email address is on that notice that you got. And you can tell her how you feel about the SAD. Hopefully, you feel positive about it. In our public hearing, we had a lot of positive responses. Uh, read into the record, and we had two that were negative. And we had two individuals come to the mic, and they had some issues, not with the SAD, but with what was going on with their, their weeds. And PLM was there, they had a, a regional manager, and uh, he met with those folks later on in the meeting, and we resolved those issues. So, again, if you, if you have issues with PLM, you can call me. And I'll give you my telephone number right now, 248-770-5695. <laughs> no, that's my that's wife. Right. <laughs> I was thinking if she was listening. It's actually 97, 97. So 248-770-5697. But uh, anybody have any questions for me relative to the SAD? Yes, sir. Uh, a couple quick questions. I watched it online. Uh, was was it uh, we, that we collected 71 percent of the signatures or 51? So we the requirement to move forward with an SAD is 51 percent right. of the land mass associated with those properties. And we actually had 71. We had 71 percent. And then another question: You said there's a second public hearing August 15th. Right. Is that the second and last? Public That'll hearing? be the second and last. After that, they'll decide if they're going to do it or not. But again, we had very positive support, very positive support from the community. Uh, the petition signatures, we had a lot of challenges. Um, we, well, you guys worked really hard. When, and we, we had a lot of challenges with COVID. COVID affected us in our signature process. People didn't want to come to the door. And rightfully so. They, they didn't know us. We didn't look sure. any different than we do here right now. Mm -hmm. And, and now should actually turn it down to 71% of the people who are supportive of taxing themselves. Can the township actually say no? I thought that was a, I thought well, that was a it, poor Well, again, it would, at this point, would rely on the public input. So if all of a sudden a whole bunch of people came and said, we don't want that, then they would listen to that. That's why it's important for us to do this final little thing. Get that email to Julie. Um, is there anybody in here right now that objects to what we've been doing for the last seven years? I don't see a show of hands, so, I mean, when you think about the individual cost, the, it's interesting because you probably pay more for what your lawn fertilizer costs for a couple, three treatments uh, from some provider. And if you're going to buy that fertilizer at the store, I can guarantee you, you're spending a lot of money. So we're getting a good deal because we're taking the lake as a whole and we're treating the lake as a whole. And the very first thing that PLM does when they come out for a treatment, they do a survey of the lake. They're not just going out there and dumping a bunch of chemicals in. They're doing a survey of the lake and they're treating those particular spots that need to be treated. So. You know, again, we're not creating a swimming pool, but if you think you're not getting uh, something that you should be getting, in other words, you're seeing leads two weeks after, you know, call me, let me know. We, we can work that out. That's easy. So. As it relates to the canals, I believe I heard that they actually have their own special assessment district. They do have their own special assessment district, and PLM is their provider as well. So that's not all the canals, though. That's just Marina Point, right? Marina Point. Marina Point yeah. states. Yeah. You mean like not the one that goes up to the ice cream place? Yeah, yeah. and there's a couple other small That's in our district. Yeah. That's where you have to go on to the bridge to get in. So. Yeah. That's, that's, in, that's in the big salad. That's included in the 
Oh, that's in ours. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? I'd see a hand. Um, I'm in the back bay by uh, that surrounds Bridge Street, Central, and Fairview, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of those Illinois weeds. It didn't take, the first treatment didn't take care of them. Now, you're saying maybe another week. If, if we don't see any improvement in a week, what, can we get another treatment? They will come back and they, they will address it. I let them know today that several people had evidence of the weed still up. And that's what he told me, give it another week and we'll see where we stand. All right. They guarantee their work. So. This is a, a big outfit, and they've done quality service for us. Yeah, I, I've been happy till this year. This year, it <coughs> just seems like it didn't, the treatment did not work in our bay. Okay. It's good and I see everybody raking, you know. I think the weather played a big part of it. I mean, I've been here since 2012, and I've got a lot of things around my island right now that I never had. Right. And, and so, obviously, we know a lot more here than, but. Uh, it, it's kind of crazy, right? And a lot of it had to do with the weather. It was so cold, and then all of a sudden, you know, it was in the wool, and then it got so hot. Yeah. I don't even know what the temperature is in the lake right now, but I was putting in docks yesterday, and we were in the in there for seven hours, yeah. and it was felt fantastic. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's like bath water. Yeah. 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 It was crazy. Any other questions? Please let me know if you don't have that clear up. Okay. okay. Matt, do you have any questions that we can answer? Without any questions, I guess we'll move on into the agenda. Uh, we really want to, the Lake Association, we'd really like to thank you for the support that you have given us on the SAD. We couldn't do it without you folks. And uh, in the old days, we did self-help neighborhood programs. And, uh, and then there was a few people that did their own remedies. And that's where it got a little scary because you can go to Ohio and you can buy anything you want to dump in the lake and people were doing controls that they really shouldn't have been doing and causing problems for their neighbors. And we actually had a few situations where the kids broke out with a rash and stuff, from the, especially from Daquat. So, but anyway, thank you so much. And thank you for answering your doors and letting us get your signature. Um, we'll move on to the next thing on our item, which is uh, committee reports, treasurer's report. I know you've been waiting for that. <laughs> I'm Richard Benoy, treasurer. This is the most exciting part of the whole meeting. <laughs> and I won't give you my wife's phone number. <laughs> uh, the period that we have to report on is our last fiscal year. It began April 1st, 2021, and ends March 31st, 2022. We had a beginning bank and PayPal balance on April 1st of 2021 of $6,940.81. Our income consisted of membership uh, dues and donations, private donations. Our total income for that period was $3,516.26. Our expenses for that period, and, and uh, I'll read each category. Liability insurance, $1,603. Lola programs, and these programs include what we put in in the special assessment district. And that was this year. Um, and our total for Lola programs was $2,479.26. Membership fees, subscriptions, postage, newsletter, communication, and others, $353.88. We also do a $500 donation uh, for the Lake Orion fireworks. It's an event that brings many people together and we consider that as a great gift to the community. Our total expenses for that period were $4,936.14.
That leaves us a balance of $5,520.93 as of March 31st of this year. Um, and as Jerry said, we spent $2,700 uh, in costs that are non-recoverable so that we could have this special assessment. And that has brought a lot of quality to the lake. Um, and so your uh, donations and membership are very important to the organization. Um, and that concludes the report. Thank you. Any questions? I, I have a question. Of the 800 and so properties, because I know that the dues are, are um, optional, so of the 800, how many, how many people send money in? As it stands right now, there's two, two components there. We have our new memberships for this year, and if you join during our petition process last year, you're that if you joined at that point in time, you are automatically a 2022 paid dues member. Okay, does that make sense? Because we were so far into our fiscal year, we just we just waived it and said you're going to be a 2022 member. So you get basically one and a half years of, of membership for that for joining at that time. And currently, our paid membership is approximately 135 people. Um, that that falls very short of where we would like to be, uh, where we should be, but. That issue with membership has really been one that we've struggled with for years and years. And we haven't quite figured out exactly how to do this. Uh, back when we formed our association in 1978, when we became chartered, we had the issue of the public access wanting to expand the number of sites over there from what it was unspecified to 135. So we were able to negotiate with the state, and because that was such a driving force, our, our membership swelled to 426. And we were going around house to house, knocking on the door to get you to join so we can have some clout, because politicians listen to numbers. If you got a lot of people, they know there's a lot of squeaks in the wheel. So you know, it's, just, it's just the way the business works. So this year, we haven't started our membership drive yet, but we're, we're getting ready to do it. And uh, you can see on your ballot that we got some younger folks coming in with fresh ideas. And uh, folks like myself who've been involved with it since 1977, you know, we're, we're kind of wore out, you know? <laughs> so we got some fresh ideas coming at us and we're very hopeful that we can uh, recruit some new memberships. And, I, is everybody in this room a member of the Lake Association now? Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much, as well as our attending our meeting. Well, we, need, we definitely need additional support. I mean, unless we got word of mouth, we, we've tried to spot everything in our power. We, uh, as board members, we have yard signs that we put out at the island, and I normally put out huge banners. Um, and the reason why we, we went to 135 is because we walked around and was asking people. If not, our average is what, about 35 or 40, which includes 10 board members. So membership is extremely low. Yes, um, so whatever you guys can do, because we have it on Facebook, we have it on websites, we try to post it as much as possible. Just There's just a lot of lack of support. There's so much. Just for us putting in the buoys, they should pass. I mean, uh, the people just think that it's comfortable to something. That's great. Right? Yes. You might wonder why I kind of any, any other questions on membership? You're right. It's not mandatory, it's voluntary. We have always been a voluntary organization. In some some HOAs, homeowners associations, you are obligated to join the association, part of your deed restriction. Anyway, I wanted to share with you, because uh, we run the No Wake Buoy program for the Lake Association, we have 17 of these out there on the lake, 
And this particular buoy, um, she's dead. She's dead. This is better known as George's buoy. And I can guarantee you George didn't run it over. I'm gonna get out of the sunlight here. But it got struck by a prop. And there's coupons coming around that you can see just how thick the actual wall is. This is what it looks like on the inside. That's what we ordered double thick wall buoys in order to survive boat strikes. This poor guy, he got, she got hit and cut right through it. And on the bottom of the buoy where the chain is, there were two additional cuts down there. I would love to see the prop on the boat. Yeah. Now these now cost us $348 each. And in order to get the perfect target, we put a light on top of it so that you can see it out there. And if you choose to, you can miss it because you can see it. But if you choose to hit it, well, this just plain helps you, you know? But um, this, one, this one also reflects a lot of damage that was sustained over some time. Uh, three years ago, three years ago, we put all new decals on the buoys. Five years ago, we ordered a brand new fleet of buoys for the whole way. That's when we did a adopt a buoy program. And uh, I see some of you have that little sheet I put together for be a buoy buddy. And uh, it's just, you know, it's kind of a, a light-sided approach to why we have buoys out there. But we, we, we got a lot of expense in this, and this comes out of our membership dues. So this is one of the, the main programs. Started in 1986, and uh, we're proud to be able to do it for you. Some of us used to drag these up on the boat by, by hand. Uh, now we have a nice little crane that takes them out that, you know, we all get together, take them out in the fall, and. Sometimes we put new decals on them, and sometimes they, we run out of time. But anyway, any questions on buoys? Can we uh, sing a song for this one? How many, yeah, how many more look like that? Um, there's probably this bad. Mm. None look this bad out there right now because we freshened up a few of them. And have well, you looked into uh, buoys that don't require decals on them, that where it's embedded in the plastic? Actually, they done? don't make any. They don't make any that it, it, because there's different configurations for buoys. Okay. There's swim buoys, no wake buoys, uh, there, there's a lot of, uh, you're in a, a channel buoy, you know, there's, so there's all kinds of different markings they put on these. But these are made in uh, Minnesota, and uh, half the cost of the, the buoy, the, the, outside of the $348, is the shipping. Individual shipping on these are seventy dollars a piece, so it gets very expensive for us. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna. The plan is to this fall when we get them out, we're gonna put new decals on all of them, and the decal sets are fifty dollars a piece. And if you want to come and help us peel these decals off, we'd love some help. So, so. but anyway, <clears throat> any questions? We have to bring our own beer to the. DPL party? Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Just call 770. <laughs> <laughs> but what are you going to do that? If someone would like to help do that, to help you with it, when, how would we know to do that? Where would we, how would we know to do that? Do you put out a flyer or I mean a, something I'm on sorry, Facebook? I missed the question. How, if some of us here, oh no, I'm volunteering him. <laughs> if he wants to come help you, um, like how would he know? What, what day are you doing it? Like, do you we'll know? We'll put it on our Facebook. Okay. And we'll put it on our web page. Okay, great. Two places. How many of you learned about our meeting today via Facebook? Two? Three? Okay. How many learned about it because of the email that went out this morning? Perfect, okay. Perfect. Now, with that being said, is we're, we're trying to update the email program. Um, it's unfortunate that there's only eight of us, nine of us, so it's kind of hard with timing, uh, which will be on the next thing with membership when we talk about. But yeah, anything that we can do to try to get additional help, you know, whether it's putting the buoys, whether it's anything that, that we try to do, we always need help with. You know, 
know, you. So when we went around from the SAD, it was basically eight of us, right? Of the eight of us that hit 850 houses. So that was time and time and time that we had to give up from our family and our lives, take off of work, just try to go back and forth on houses. And we did advertise it. We did have a kind of fun, not fundraiser, but we had a, an event at Oakwest for some people to come in and sign up. And, you know, that just kind of didn't go that great. But like I said, word of mouth. That being said, there, there's a little small piece of paper that you guys have. Um, so it's time to actually uh, renew our board positions. There's two open positions right now. We have president-elect and we have a secretary. Uh, president-elect consists of a basic a three-year commitment. It's uh, president-elect and then for one year, president for the following year, and then after that, you're Yes. 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 So we're looking for a person that. Uh, secretary is a two-year term, so we're looking for a position for that. Uh, after that, we need to vote on the rest of the ballot. So the first one is for treasurer for Richard Benoit. The two-year director's positions is Tom Patterson, Jerry Richards, Tim Berry. If you're not happy with anybody on these, you can actually fill in your name on any one of these positions. And then we can vote for you guys too. So if there's, if there's anybody, um, so we, we definitely need to vote. So with this group here, um, the people that are on the ballot, and if you guys want to fill in your name on one of these positions, we'd be more than happy to, to look at it and vote on it too. Is there any questions on anything? Can you fill them in on how much time you actually? How many times we don't meet once a week, and we meet? So I might even tell it's only five minutes out of the year. But no, uh, you know, we tend to meet only in the summer months, um, basically about, about once a month and we meet for about two hours. Normally we try to make a fun event out of it. We'll either meet at, at my island or meet at Jerry's house, or sometimes we'll run out of one of the rooms here. We'll get together and just talk about everything that we're gonna talk about for the next month. Um, a lot of it has to do with the planning, uh, getting out buoys, taking, uh, putting them in, doing that. Uh, whether we need fundraisers, charity events, things that we're going to donate our money to, that kind of good stuff. So it, it's it's a good group of guys. Gals are more than welcome to join. Fortunately, we just haven't had any of those either. Can I add one thing? Go ahead. Uh, we are going to have a lighted boat parade this year, and we are looking for help on that. Um, if you'd like to help, um, Chris just pointed out to me, if you just take this membership, and you at the very top here, you can check off for what you'd like to be involved with, put your name on it, telephone number, or your email. And it's not like we're asking you for another 20 bucks. We just want, would like to get the information because somebody has expressed interest. So, and with that, that, we also, if I may interject, we also do the patrolling for the dragon boat races. Mm -hmm. And this is really kind of a fun thing, but we're looking for pontoon boats. We get two of them out there that crisscross around. Just to hold the line, keep uh, the crowds away from the <coughs> dragon boats. And we're looking for a two hour commitment over both days uh, for that. So if anybody's interested in that, uh, I, will, uh, I will be in contact with you. So please put that in. And that really is a great event because you're, you're actually front row and center on your list. Even during the races. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not just practice, races yeah. too. Yeah. I have, a, I have a question about something we haven't talked about. Um, what's the sentiment on the lake uh, about lowering the lake every five years? <coughs> so uh, and, and who makes that this decision? Year, it's supposed to happen this yeah, year, but as of right now, it's still up in the air on whether they're going to do who, it. Or who not. calls the ball on that? The village. The village? The village. They have to pull the permit. They have to apply to the state of Michigan for the permit to lower it. So feel free to call Joe Young. I will, but but they would. I'm guessing Joe would do it if the El look if the Lola said there's like the huge need for this, or the people really wanted this to or, happen, or right? Because really otherwise, no one calls Joe, <laughs> right? I called Joe. Why do you? Yeah. Well, we have, again, it's, it's more support because we can come in as an association and say yes, yes we're, we're supporting this. Right. But there's permits that have to be both and insurance. Uh, 
what's the, what's the sentiment? I mean, do, does the majority of the lake prefer it or not prefer well, it? It was in the questionnaire, right? That you yeah. Guys, it's on this little mini Well, and it's also, there's one online that it's we did. It's supposed to help you uh, work on your seawall. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, I did. But I think it's for the, the last time it happened. The last time it happened, about three days before the lake started to come back up, I lost a huge wall. And, wow. and I was scrambling Stranger to get it fixed. Lady. They did, but it just, it, it, it sucked. I went out there and inspected it. It was great. Looked at it and then, you know, what was it, two weeks roughly it was down, I think? And then boom, about the yeah, bait it fell down. And then start raising it back up again. Yeah. Because it's, it's a slow lowering yeah. of the lake. Yeah. And then Mother Nature brings it back up again. Right. So but, but is the feedback thus far through the the online questionnaire that went out, has it been positive on that? Most people want to support it. Yeah. I okay. have heard that the, the, the guy under Valentino, the, the water goes under Valentino's there. Oh, so I heard he was, uh, he or she, or dead set against it. 100%. They're, they're afraid that their structure is going to have damage for some odd reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we can lower it with the deep draw tube as well. It just takes a longer period of time. We got a 30 inch pipe down there that is, provides us for the, the deep draw. Uh, if you don't know what the deep draw is about, the DNR put it in there to take and siphon the water from 50 foot down in the water where it's cold to send it down Paint Creek rather than the water that goes over the top of the dam that is, you know, could be 70, 75, 80 degrees. So it's better for the trout to take the cold water, the cold water down rather than the, the surface water. But we can do it. We can still do it. That's the point. And some of the people that I've talked to that don't like the idea is that it happens too early. It cuts the boating season. Yeah. It, very it's short September, time. isn't it? Uh, late September? Usually by September they start. Yeah, it's usually yeah, right after Labor Day. Yeah. Day yeah. And it's an inch a day is yeah. the targeted. No, my question was the timing of it. So they usually start late, uh, get right after uh, right after Labor Day. Labor Day. Labor Day. Right after Labor Day, they start dropping. The, the goal is to go down an inch a day. How far down will it go? Um, well, oh, a lot. The thirty inches, thirty to thirty-six inches. Like like around my island, when they did it last time, I probably had good twenty feet, just about around the whole thing. Okay. So, so did, you, did you find any bodies? <laughs> so, um, has anybody heard that that there's some people downstream who have complained about their properties flooding as a result of this? It's a slow. It's a it's slow. A, it's a slow. It was that yeah. The other reason, somebody told me that there were some people downstream, like in Rochester, who were like petitioning to stop us from draining our lake. It was never substantiated that that caused it. Uh -huh. It was never substantiated that that caused their issues. Yeah. So they, they do tend to have water in some areas like the Yeah, ordinarily, heavy rains and so forth. So kind of like my backyard. Exactly. Floods. Gary, do you have anything else you want to talk about? I didn't raise anything else on that. No, I think we're set. We're ready for our vote. Okay. Board of Affirmation. So with, with that being said, if you guys want to check off that you guys agree, agree as, as we wrote it, that'd be great. If you want to put in your name on the two open positions, that's even better. Volunteers, just write your stuff down, whatever we can do. And once you guys are done, I'll come around and collect them. Right. So, and Debbie's right, so if, don't, if nobody wants to actually enter their names on the two open positions, <coughs> you can just take it as is. Matt, if you'd love to join us, we'd love to have you. <laughs> Getting back to the uh, lighting goal parade, so uh, the dragon is coming back to the lake. That, so that's kind of cool. We're trying. Oh, hey. my island, I just bought it. Dino? So, my game plan right now. What, hey, Jerry, when's the parade, dog? It, it's the, the Saturday right before Labor Day, right, Jerry? Sorry? Lighted, lighted boat parade, when is that? That's August uh, 25th, I believe. So Saturday part right of before. the dragon on the lake activities. Right before that. Yeah, and you guys were looking for volunteers to help with the work on the Miss Lola? Martha. 
Yeah, so uh, so for the drag, so I did, the, the reg has been on automation for about three years now. So I just took possession of it last week. Um, I'm going to put it in the water this weekend just so people remember it. And then we'll probably do this week. We have a, a, just a fun day, just trying to put it back together, get the lights working, all that stuff. Go through the motor right now and make sure it's good. Um, I want to look at, make sure that it can show its true flames. That kind of stuff. So it should be pretty cool on that. But we are looking for volunteers to help us on that. We'll post it. And hopefully within the next week or two, we'll get our email system up and running so that we can start emailing the people. Um, and that's the other thing too, is we need more email addresses. Like when I went around for ballots and a couple of the other guys, we tried to get as many emails as possible. But so if you guys want to leave, leave a, an email, I can get a piece of paper. And then that way we have you guys in, as an updated list, and that'd be great for you. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys can fill out that form and put in your emails and stuff. Please, please print so we can read the email address. I've been looking at a few of them and it's almost impossible. And I don't think we have that many doctors in our community. So. <laughs> so with that being said, does anybody have any questions of us or, or wants? Yeah, I just wanted to. Those who are going to volunteer for the president elect and secretary could let us know ahead of time so we don't get you fighting each other. We want to vote for the best person. So appreciate all of you who are volunteering. Your island, where is your island? You know what Sandbar is? Oh, yeah, okay. That's good. Okay, that's <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> you make two, 200 close oh, to yeah, friends. You uh, have a lot of friends. <laughs> Uh, there's a couple of lake hogs there with uh, buoys and uh, stuff. Is that, uh, does that move those? So you're talking about the teal house yeah. at, at the end? Yeah. They put out swimming buoys because people are getting too close to their property also. Just, I mean, nobody respects that, that part of the lake for some odd reason. And so it, it's real difficult to try to patrol and all that stuff. So unfortunately, if you don't, you don't have choices sometimes. It's throw them out there and then Got to record, got to record, yes. uh, it, it's just difficult to try to keep people away from, from those things. Yeah. A lot of people don't respect privacy and stuff. There's a couple other ones too. Right? The uh, going into the area by the Stunt Harbor, there's a guy, the guy there, he's got my hand. Oh, yeah, he's got cold and Yes. That's David oh. Hodges. Uh, and I believe that that is an approved swim area it is. because he's had that there for ever. He puts it out there, and, and I, but I believe he has a permit. Oh. So, Chris, that's what the right guy asked him. Well, yeah. I mean, it doesn't bother me. Uh, just you know, I put it out there. Right. Right. The just come right in. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, but I mean like, like it would be. So as a group, 
we scratch our head every time that we get together. You know, all of a sudden we get one PayPal guy and we're, we're ready to throw a party. Because, <laughs> and that's just one. You know, it's difficult. Like I said, uh, we went into before the SAG, we had 35 members and, and 10 of us were on the board. So we only had 25 people. And that's after we put up the signs, after I put up all the signs on the island. Uh, we talked to all of friends, neighbors, relatives, and I think that's pretty much who joined. Uh, it's amazing that we have this many people that live on the eight, on the lake, eight thirty-five plus another hundred that have. Hold on, she didn't have any. So, but there's another hundred people that that have access to lake. Um, so we'll call it nine fifty, and the best we ever got was one thirty-five in the left, and, until we had a problem. You know, so what Jerry said earlier is. The problem is if we don't have membership, something bad happens, we can't ever go in front of the state and say, hey, listen, we have 900 people, but we have an association with 35 people. You know, look at you and just laugh and say, well, they don't care about the lake, why should we? You know, and that's what the reality is. Can we go to the August 15th meeting and add it to the set? No. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, but, but we, well, as a group, we feel that the twenty dollars is more than fair. I mean, you can't even go to McDonald's anymore for, for twenty dollars for a single person nowadays. So it, it, it can't be the dollars. It's just for some odd reason that it's just people don't want to join or they just don't care. And that being said, for those of you that are members, you are automatically an ambassador to the association. That means you can talk to your neighbors and your friends and you know whatever and get in a party situation and share this experience tonight with them and say, hey, these guys, they're not doing a bad job for just rookies. So, you know, like a serious side, we can talk up our association, we can build it up by just the efforts that we cultivate at a grassroots type of process. Is the uh, is the only way to sign up the, the, the way you sign me up with the piece of paper and go knock on the door? Is there an online? No, usually yeah. he does yeah, there's not been there are back like he did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should see what he did to get me here tonight. No. <laughs> you really got it. So, so you can go, you can go, on, go online and fill out the application, you can go yeah. on PayPal, yeah. and uh, we're going to also have we're gonna Venmo. Add Venmo and um, maybe Zelle. We're going to add a couple ways to make it, try and make it easier for people to pay, but I think it's just Communication, right? Because right, the reality, you can go right, right on our website and you just click the button and it's just automatic. LolaInfo.org. LolaInfo.org. If you don't see it there, send us a message. No, unfortunately, we can't publish that. Okay. Is there anything else that we need to talk about? Is everybody happy? I will accept the answer. Yeah. Sorry. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everybody. We really appreciate you guys. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you.